This is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a video review of iOS 4.2. Last week on November 18th, Apple released the so-called Gold Master Seed to developers. So my review today will be based on the Gold Master Seed, assuming that there will be little if any change from the final public release. Today's review will be a little bit more critical and in-depth than the previous previews have been and I'll actually be voicing some reservations or criticisms I have uh, about the way iOS 4.2 is implemented. Let's start with multitasking. Of course you enter the multitasking bar by double clicking on the home button and that gives you a view of all the running or suspended applications. In most cases the applications are really in a suspended state and they're not really doing anything in the background with most of their parameters being parked in flash memory. Theoretically, there's nothing wrong with this, but the system does tend to get cluttered fairly quickly with all of the applications that you've ever run in the past few days because whenever you exit an application by pressing on the home button, you never really leave it or cause it to quit. I'll give an example. For instance, I'll just start up numbers. And we'll just start a new spreadsheet. Now if I exit and look at the uh, multitasking bar, of course numbers has now appeared as a uh, suspended or background process and it'll just keep accumulating all of these various apps as you run them without ever really quitting them. Sometimes it would be nice to quit them and of course the current mechanism for doing that is to press down on the app icon until you get the wiggly icon feature and the multitasking bar and then you can press on the little um, uh, red minus button to make the application go away and really quit. Um, I think Apple actually needs to stop using the home button so much for all of this stuff and give people a way to truly quit out of the application when they're in the application. Right now you can't do that. You simply can't do it. One nice feature of the multitasking capability in iOS 4.2 is the ability to switch between applications without going into the home screen. As long as they're running in a background process, you can easily switch. And I'll just give a quick demonstration of that. Let's uh, go into an application that's already running. And then if I double click on the home button, the multitasking bar appears underneath the application, so I haven't actually left the application. If I want to go into another application, such as Kindle, I can switch directly there, and I'm now in the, the book I was reading in Kindle. It's actually very convenient, and it's very nicely implemented. I've mentioned before that iPod has a rather curious feature where its icon can appear twice in the multitasking bar. For instance, let's start iPod. And we'll just get some music going. Now we'll, we'll exit it by pressing once on the home button. Now if we go into the multitasking bar, it actually appears twice. I can use the controls to uh, pause the audio. But if I resume playback, and then hold the application, that will actually halt the process. So I believe this icon here is really just a quick launch 
button for the iPod and it doesn't really indicate that the iPod process is running in the background until you get the other icon. As I've mentioned previously, the multitasking bar now features the orientation lock button. Uh, this has been moved to the left hand side for, for this latest version of iOS 4.2. But I think it indicates that Apple does intend to stick with this approach. Um, they've essentially replaced the hardware physical button on the side of the iPad with this software programmable button. And the physical button has now been turned into a mute button. The mute button, unfortunately, only mutes system sounds and not actual audio playback. For instance, I can go ahead and go into the iPod and keep playing back. So iPod audio isn't actually muted by the mute button. It's only system sounds that are actually muted. Let's talk now about folders uh, folders were really a great addition, but there are some aspects of the folder implementation that I'm not really thrilled with. For instance, the folders are kind of a plain gray, dull gray, and don't really show anything about the, uh, the content of the folder other than little miniature icons and don't really display any other information. Folders can only contain icons for apps or other icons that can be displayed on the home screen, such as bookmarks. I think the big deficiency of the folder implementation right now is the lack of ability to display files. Uh, files are still only managed from within the application, and I think this is a real disadvantage. Um, everyone who uses a computer wants to be able to manage their files from the operating system and not just from the application that created them. But right now the, the, the folder approach simply does not allow you to group or display files for the various applications. And I think this is a deficiency and it will be overcome eventually, but it will probably take Apple a while to get around to it. Creating and managing folders actually is pretty easy. Uh, all you have to do is uh, press down on an icon to get the wiggly icon feature and then just drag a couple of icons on top of each other and you have a folder. And uh, it gives you a default name which you can change if you want to. I don't think we'll bother in this case. Uh, but it put my my uh, electronic book readers together and call them books. Later on, if I want to go back and edit that, all I have to do is hold down on the uh, icon again, press on that, and now I can actually edit the name of the folder if I wish. Or uh, delete uh, members of the folder. <laughs> 